audit actually uh, so the, the intention was to have a con some kind of audit right because uh, whenever we engage this kind of fdp uh, i i so this is my uh, approach also so when i mean in past uh, 8 to 9 months i have conducted few fdps uh, on different uh, themes like data science information retrieval uh, and uh, uh, different pedagogies for online teaching so there also we will have we used to have a kind of quiz also so it will always i mean th there is a philosophy that uh, uh, this philosophy is like whenever we engage some kind of learning some kind of class root kind of discussion it is always uh, preferred it should be always preferred to have at least examination because examination are something which makes uh, some portion of knowledge uh, as a permanent uh, because whenever we are going for examination we used to remember the answers of these questions so the philosophy of this uh, no, the philosophy of this quiz is not that but okay it is it should be always on the place so uh, good morning dr sir so with us uh, our expert session expert uh, with us uh, connected i think is connected with us so we can uh, start the session sir so because uh, formally, uh, although formally, uh, I have to welcome all the participants and formally I welcome you also. So we can start the discussion because we have got around 40 participants and meanwhile others will also be joining this session. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, right. So I same as the previous day, I want to request participants that whenever they realize they have some kind of questions and queries, so they can immediately post on chat box and we'll try to take each and every question, possible question, like in the like in yesterday's session, the last session, we have uh, we have missed few questions. I have noted down all those questions and we'll try to answer, we will try to get answers from uh, today's uh, experts, right? so it's okay and uh, keep posting your answer because that's that's something indicates that we are much involved which are we are much uh, uh, basically getting all these concepts uh, which are shared by the experts so it is always encouraging so if you have any specific doubt i mean i will at the end of the fdp i will be uh, sharing the email ids uh, of each and every expert along with the brief bio so I will be adding the email ID and uh, uh, URL of their institutional or any profile link. Uh, so if you feel that uh, you have some query, I mean, still it is it is still open after every piece. You can simply drop mail to the part uh, to the expert and uh, simply mention the reference of this FDP. So that is the best we can do. And uh, uh, this is something which we are doing from the past uh, past um, few years. That whenever we used to conduct. Uh, FDP, it is our responsibility to connect uh, the participant of FD FDP with uh, the experts which we have planned or uh, which we have for the FDP, right? So, naturally, there is one uh, specific announcement which we have verified yesterday also that in the month of January, maybe in, in the very first week itself, uh, we are having uh, one, one another FDP which is based, which is on uh, machine intelligence for knowledge extraction. So it is kind of uh, announcement from our side. So we will be naturally uh, sending this uh, invitation for uh, attending the workshop. So it will be again free of, I mean, there will be no registration fees from our side. And the duration will be uh, for, uh, will be of five days, right? So uh, we expect uh, that uh, based on your possible time, based on your availability, you can attend that workshop also. In that workshop, we will be having only uh, we will be having actually five different experts for five different days, right? So uh, it is not like this workshop that uh, we have I mean, more than five because for, for five days FDP, we are having more than five experts. So uh, basically we have touched upon some aspect, but uh, in the proposed FDP, uh, we have actually planned uh, specifically five different experts for the five different days. And uh, it will be uh, planned like uh, we will have uh, uh, theoretical session on the first on the first session and second session is for uh, uh, technical or implementation uh, based discussion 
okay so dr saroj is i think connected sir uh, can you can, can you start the session sir actually connected i'm getting some problem because there is a problem in say sharing the ppt this oh okay it's taking time yeah yes sir okay so uh, i mean i mean we are getting uh, this message that there is a technical issue at dr saroj in so mean the time i request um, uh, participant to uh, share uh, anything i mean if they want to add something related to this fdp because though we have two sessions this session 1 and session 2 and eventually at the end we have session 3 uh, for a uh, life skill based discussion uh, okay so link uh, yeah we will be we will be posting this link uh, in this chat box while uh, we are closing the session 2 so maybe around 1:45 or 2 o'clock i will be posting the link uh, for the uh, quiz in this uh, chat box or uh, and along with it i will be sending a mail also so like we are on the daily basis we are sending uh, links for the uh, next day session and theme next next day uh, <coughs> discussion so similarly i will be posting a, a mail uh, around 145 uh, with this link attached into it right so that is something i should i, I think it should be clear to you now, now and, and as far as uh, a feedback concern so i hope you have gone through your profile on atal uh, web page there they have provided uh, the specific space for uploading or adding the feedback so if if it is i mean i hope it is visible uh, or it is accessible to you on your profile atal web file profile page so you can uh, go there and you can add uh, whatever feedback you have uh, you want to add or you have for this fdp and and, and definitely conduct of fdp and a session how how basically we have covered and what what is the level of experts we have so all those things i think uh, they might be uh, available in the that that particular uh, option or win option in uh, the atal profile so you can uh, submit the feedback because feedback feedback is something which is essential uh, to get a fdp certificate fdp participant certificate right so along with it along with this attendance and uh, along with the quiz marks uh, feedback is uh, certainly required right so let me see uh, I mean, what what is the technical issue Dr. Saroj is facing? Yes, sir. Sir, are you able to hear me, Dr. Saroj? Yes, sir. Dr. Saroj, yeah, I think I'm audible to you. So let me know. so let me connect to dr uh, saroj Yeah, so Dr. Uh, Saroj will be connecting at any point of time. So he had got uh, some technical issue. I mean, 
related to network. Uh, so he will be sorting it out and we will be with us. Okay, so uh, I mean, I just got a message from Dr. Sir that he will be joining uh, in, in next one or two minutes. So, in the time, I request uh, any participant to raise their uh, voice, raise the voice, and share uh, the f uh, f any observation related to the FDP. And uh, so that will be, I mean, that's the best we can do. So, you can, I mean, you can share any, 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 any your observation on uh, the sessions which we, we have engaged. Anything which we have missed as a part of uh, should be part of IR. So if we have missed something, can you add on this? And uh, if in best way, if you can suggest uh, something which needs to be covered while engaging FDP on uh, machine intelligence for knowledge extraction. So so let's utilize this time and can you, can you share these possible uh, possible topics or possible aspects which we can share? Uh, uh, which we, we, we should be sharing uh, during this proposed FDP or planned FDP on knowledge extraction. So any, any participant may enable their audio and share. Till the time we have uh, Dr. Saroos. Uh, so Dr. Saroos, uh, so uh, I'm audible to you. you. You are audible. I'm sending you the PPT to you because yeah, so that's I think that's the best we can do if we are facing the technical issue. Uh, okay, it is maybe it is because of network issue or uh, some. I think it is because of network issue. Then it is less. I think that's right. Right, right. So okay, that's the best way we can run. Like in the third day of FDP. We have got one file to be uh, to be played, and that file is having audio. So uh, one of the pro I mean our expert from IIT Rupa has shared that file through directly to me, and we have played it on, on on during the discussion. So it's okay, sir. We will take uh, that file and we'll play it. Yeah. So. Uh, Till the time we, we we start this discussion, so can you let me that specific uh, topic or title or uh, theme uh, which should be covered? I mean, during the discussion of any retrieval or any information retrieval uh, related uh, uh, short-term training course or anything. So, uh, if you suggest uh, or if you uh, let me know, or let us know, it will be uh, naturally considered for the upcoming upcoming planned events. So you, uh, you can directly post on chat box also. So if you are interested to listen it, or if you're interested to to be covered in. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, sir, I'm Sandeep Mittal uh, yes. from Airport Authority of India. <laughs> sir, I would request to have a, a topic involving light for data centers or the information retrieval from a security point of view. If it is covered both in, in context of theory and practical, it will be very beneficial for all of us right so actually uh, this data security and uh, with respect to storage or data center uh, i mean it was not planned i mean to be very honest in this fdb because we are very much focused on this uh, processing or algorithmic aspect of uh, ir and machine intelligence so maybe uh, naturally it should be part of it because now we are gathering data uh, from here and there from any any sources so it should it should be i mean it is it is something which now we're i mean raising an alert to the individuals who are working on these specific fields so it should be uh, on it will uh, we have we have noted it down and we will be taking it so any any other addition yes uh, so can i talk 
yes please sir prakash hegde sir so i like the way it started with uh, nature inspired first uh, yeah. then yesterday we went to semantics also but uh, we saw that uh, most of the things were discussed were like uh, like semantics little got inside when ar and uh, ml and ai took over like uh, 2014 15 it kind of saturated and today we are having session on social also so semantic social nature inspired every context was covered i was looking forward for uh, modern challenges because the millennials and the boomers who are there they kind of are putting sort of different contextual data on web their usage is different uh, their usage of internet access is different so if there is anything on contemporary issues itself uh, like say uh, that could have been one more part uh, like say uh, i have seen that the modern data is very different from the previous data which we had uh, just my suggestion sir right so one of the challenge which i i have also felt that should be part of this fdp and that is uh, data and information visualization right yes, sir Yes. so that happened actually i have planned a session because i am much i am i am involved in this aspect so i am very much involved in uh, this data visualization and information visualization uh, and uh, uh, it was planned actually earlier but uh, we have kept uh, uh, the focus on theoretical aspect so we have not gone into this because when we talk about information visualization it talks about some kind of creation of new system creation of new gi it is kind of practical implementation so i cannot explain something by simply showing the snapshot of my uh, design system design system designed for information visualization so I, it yes yes please i am so sorry i uh, because sir is already there and we are already late maybe we can take it later so yeah so yes i mean, I, I think this screen that uh, shared screen is visible yes sir yes sir. okay so now we can start dr suraj uh, uh, so uh, how we will be thinking uh, syn- because i have uh, played this ppt so you need to give me uh, a kind of uh signal uh, that i need to move for the next ppt dr suraj dr suraj yes so are you are you able to hear hear me okay let me let me confirm with the dr suraj so that, so that we can start the session Uh, yes dr suraj uh, if i am audible to you uh, i am ready to start this discussion so you you need to uh, just enable your audio and let me know when to start when to move the slide Yes, Dr. Suro. So, can we play? Okay, we are getting a slight audio from your side. Uh, yes, Dr. Suro. So, I think uh, uh, we are getting getting some kind of connectivity issue still. Uh, let's let's be patient for a while because uh, he has planned this, this specific session uh, on. on basically uh, social intelligence so let let's let's wait for him yeah so actually uh, till the time we we will be getting uh, connected connectivity with dr saros so 
okay so i think he has shared me he told me to stop the sharing okay so i have stopped sharing okay now i expect dr saroj to be uh, to be with us uh, very soon and i think he will be able to uh, start the discussion yes uh, yes sir you were talking about visualization part yeah so visualization actually uh, what i have explored uh, in the in the duration of last 3 4 years uh, so we have gone through the literature part as well as the possible available visualization tools so we have explored around uh, i think 250 125 different tools for the visualizations visualization for in kind of like we 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 will we are we are having different platforms to visualize twitter data we have got different visualization for scientific document visualization so there are and dimensions of uh, document and text visualization so we have explored all those possible uh, tools or interfaces or platforms and uh, we have uh, identified few dimensions for classification of those tools so we are realized, we have realized that uh, in future we will be having these kind of platforms in each platform in these the in in basically in on the top of any any system which is dealing with information or data so uh, because uh, till the time we are having till the time or till our time actually we have these visualization tools to display the information only display the information we are put we are pushing the information on these visual visual platforms or interfaces but now maybe uh, down the line 8 uh, to 10 years we will be having uh, these uh, uh, i mean enabled interfaces i can say so these 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 platforms which will be providing a lot of features to the user that user can play with the data something like that he can have this control on the interface uh, through which he can he can operate on the data right so yes. Uh, this this information visualization or interface for data visualization is the future right because uh, i mean in one of the uh, session by one of the expert from iit rudki uh, he has shared this fact that uh, our our hum i mean human mind is uh, basically this learning of human tendency is controlled by uh, the visual so like uh, we have five different senses so Uh, out among these five senses this uh, i mean the, this uh, visual or this i mean this eye eye sense or visual sense is uh, is contributing around or controlling our learning by 83% so whenever yeah. we see some information uh it is the visual input which which yes. basically have larger impact yes, so, so based on this simple yes. philosophy yes yes, yes so seismology has now become a part of brain study as well like yes. phonology seismology morphology yes. and uh, yes, yes. so like we can as i can mention uh, we are also realizing that now each and everything is coming in a different visual ways i mean this byju's and other platforms are utilizing yes. this opportunity and they are making their text content their learning contents uh, by using different visual mediums different visual uh, elements right so and that is this this these all things are related to this single philosophy that whenever we present something on a visual uh, you know, platforms visual uh, Uh, representation visual tools visual structures it it will it captures uh, the user's imagination or interest in a different way so naturally in the one of this frontier in information retrieval or direction is the information visualization so if anyone is working on this direction that is the most apt diff, apt uh, i mean that is the most suitable direction uh, though we are having we need uh, i mean extra effort to design a visualization and as far as research point of view it is always difficult to claim the success of your visualization so you need to devise your own test cases so suppose you have if you have created a visualization interface uh, and to to claim that this visualization is effective to to uh, justify that this visualization interface is better than others you need to have your own test case you need to have your own uh, uh basically users and data sets on which your system is built upon right so it it is a all together a separate or narrow area which is coming up and now uh, different companies i mean it companies are developing their interfaces on the top of existing product right 
so uh, this this uh, conversational ir where we are assuming that a system is conversing with a user maybe by using a text input or a voice input uh, there is this parallel field which is called information data visualization which is uh, having uh, presence which is interacting the interest of academician as well as the industry as a product so that yes. is i mean i that is the best i can share other there are other fields also also uh, like like in one of the discussion hello yes, hello? yes hello? sir please am i audible yes sir perfectly so now we can, you can start i think just i'm trying once more okay, what do i need to share the picture sir just just you wait a bit only one minute once just i'm trying if not okay no i, I think i'm not getting anything no so let me do this sir because uh, we can utilize the time i mean i will i am here to whenever you give me a signal i will uh, play the next slide or move the slides okay okay okay, okay. Now, we, now, now we start sharing the ppt so that i can start from here so <laughs> i am just sharing the ppt okay, yeah i think it is visible and let me put it on full screen so is it perfect sir yeah it's perfect it's perfect now right so, so I'm here for the uh, whole time, and whenever you need to move the slide, I can just give me a single sir. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. like next, okay. saying yeah. next. Is it visible to everybody now? The PPT. So, hello. I think any participant can come. Yeah, it is visible, sir. Now uh, yeah, yeah. let me let me put it on full screen. Yes. Uh, yeah, full screen. Yeah. So here, the, the topic name is modeling of business or social intelligence and approach of text classification. So in this, uh, uh, this presentation, I'm going to talk about what is information retrieval and what are the basic things. And thereafter, how information retrieval can be used for say, sentiment analysis kind of thing that I'm going to show you here one by one. But basically, all the fundamental things means uh, most of the fundamental things we're going to cover up. If somebody is a beginner, then they can have say good say benefits from this presentation i think i think so we can go to the next presentation next next yeah so here what is information retrieval actually it refers to the process methods and procedures of searching locating and retrieving recorded data and information from a file or data set there are a number of definition of information retrieval but i have chosen this definition from the google because here it talks about the process method and procedures. So it is talking about the ways and the, how the ways can, can be implemented by some algorithms. All algorithms include even the information retrieval. So, so that's why it is written here, process methods and procedures. That's why nowadays information retrieval becomes a, a subject. As a, as a subject now, because we're talking about all the processes and how all those processes can be implemented by some algorithms that's the uh, procedures, all including the information retrieval. So using those methods, what generally we do, we searching, locating, and retrieving recorded data or information from a file. Mainly, what we do actually, we searching. Then after searching, locating, and retrieving, but keep in mind in information retrieval, actually we do searching kind of thing, then we retrieve the data to do different kind of application or different kind of works. And here, one thing is written data and information from a file or data set. Especially if you talk about information retrieval, it searches for the textual data, it searches for the document, the document, document. it searches for the image data, it searches for the sound data, right? These are the, the, the data actually where the information retrieval searches. So if we summarize information retrieval, then we can say information retrieval as a science or information retrieval as a system of searching for information in a document or a data set of text, image, or sound. But now we can see that it's a, it's, it's a system of searching for information in, in some multimedia data also. Multimedia data also. That's why there a new trend, the multimodal information retrieval system has come in existence. So especially if it's about information retrieval, it's talking about searching of searching for informations in documents but we can extend it in a different application in different data sets of different kind of data and informations next why then higher the information retrieval actually reduces the noise and arrives at more precise results so whenever we search for any document in google the information retrieval is the engine which retrieves 
the most usual the information or so document for us according to our query and if it finds certain documents are irrelevant those documents are filtered out and in that way actually it saves time of the reader when searches for new information so whenever we search for new information if we have good information retrieval system or the engine if that search engine is having good information retrieval system then it saves time and and we get generally the meaningful documents from here that is that is the benefit of information retrieval system next so now actually the main objective of information retrieval system is searching and retrieving the documents using the searching and retrieving the document we can do number of applications we can apply in different ways to implement in different application domains and these domains are this that i have pointed here some of the domains but keep in mind there is no limit now whereas we can see everywhere the application of information retrieval system and here we have written these are the applications so sentiment analysis recommender systems digital libraries means we can do number of activities in digital libraries using information retrieval system then image retrieval speech retrieval video retrieval search engines image extractions these are some of the applications of information retrieval next next so now if we talk about the components of information retrieval these are the fundamental components of and information retrieval system the first one is the indexing and the indexing is done using the keyword so keyword extraction is important uh, issue in information retrieval systems so indexing is done after indexing we have here searching so we have to search for the queries which one is the most similar if our objective is to retrieve such a kind of document then we have to find which one is the most similar so in searching generally we use different kind of similarity measure to find which document is most similar with the queries these are the similarity measures here we have number of similarity measures so pearson correlations coefficients this is correlation based similarity measure right spearman's correlation kendall stowe's similarity measure jacquard index or coefficients we have here simple matching coefficient then we have a quotient similarity but in document classification or searching the do similar documents the most useful similarity measure is cosine similarity measure later we'll see cosine similarity measure in detail and then also we have some distance based measure we can use those things but especially those things are not used in say document retrieval or information retrieval these are equilibrium distance or manhattan distances after this indexing and searching one of the major component of information retrieval is collection of documents because if we have the collection of documents all in the input only then the information retrieval system can be built so it's a kind of database and then in information retrieval system we must have set of queries because based on queries it searches for the document it searches for the reviews it searches for the uh, appropriate you can say the text so so the queries must be there so if you talk about the fundamental component components of an IR system then we can say these are the components indexing searching collection of documents then define set of queries the next so now the most important a step in information retrieval is keyword extraction if keywords are there then we can say if we can extract the proper keyword then we can do any kind of application properly and the acceptability of the applications becomes a higher so what is actually keyword extraction key what is keywords actually or keywords are described are the series of one or more words which provide a compact representation of the document or context. Generally, the application of keyword extraction or key keyword extraction can be text summarizations. Many times we have a number of application of text summarization. So if we do the text summarization, then keyword extraction is one of the most prominent steps. Or you can say keyword this, the, the text summarization is the application of keyword extraction. But keep in mind already you have seen in the last slide. If we do indexing, then keyword extraction is must. If we have the keywords, only then we can find the similarity between the keywords of the queries and the text of the documents which are stored in the database. So again, one thing, one, one line is written here. See the line, if keywords of a text are extracted properly, subjectivity of the text can be studied and analyzed comprehensively. It means that 
if we can extend the keywords properly, then only we can do the work properly and the acceptability of the work becomes higher. So I'm going to see how we can do the keyword extractions and what should be the steps if we make a model, an intelligent model for keyword extraction. So go to the next slide. So here we have the flow of the keyword extraction, but keep in mind, you can have a different flow. This is one of the flow. Because in text, you see information retrieval, a sentiment analysis, you can see there are different kind of so models. There are different kind of opinions. So according to me, one of the one of the framework for keyword extraction should be like this. Initially, you must have the must have the database. So where we can or where we want to extract the keywords, the database must be there. So keep in mind, in most of the cases, if you have a social data, then we need to create the database. For an example, if we do something from the Twitter data, then we need to take all the tweet tweets and we have to make the database. Similarly, if you want to make some of uh, applications from the social media, then we need to take the text data, the actual data from the social uh, sites, and then we make the database. So making database a tedious task in, in information retrieval. If you want to do certain kind of a specific applications. Then we need to do pre-processing, right? After pre-processing, then we have textual representation, then where assignment, then keyword extraction. So going one by one and discuss about these steps. Go to next slide. So here, already talked about the database. Now we have a pre-processing. What is this actually? So whenever we have the textual data, we have to pre-process it. We have to process. Otherwise, the data cannot be used. So how we can pre-process? So I have here what we, we actually applied. We made a number of some models, social networking models, the sentiment analysis models. And where actually we applied these kind of pre-processing tasks. But keep in mind, these pre-processing steps and tasks can be changed. There is no problem, right? So here actually we have taken social data. That's why we have here a removal of URLs. So whenever you collect some social data, the URL must be there. So if URLs are there, then you can omit the URL from there. And if you're having the textual data only, if no URL is there, then you don't need to do this process, right? But here we have a stop word removal. Then we have stop word removal. So in, in a case generally, there are certain kind of words. Those words do not bring any meaning of the text. For example, each, am, each, of, among, this kind of words doesn't have any kind of sentiment. These kind of words are called stop words. So when you process the data, these stop words are, has to be removed. And if you work in the Python, so for stop word removal, we have packets there. You can do really easily on that. So after a stop word removal, then you have to tokenize. Tokenize means we have to stem. We have to break the words one by one, one by one. So here you can use different kind of say unigram, bigram, ngram, whatever concept you want to do, you can use there. But especially if you do say unigram is the best because in unigram we check the words all. We're not going to take two words together. When we check two words together as a word, then that is called bigram. So, so we can tokenize here all the words or all the terms. After that, what do we do? A removal of unimportant tokens. So if you feel that, we should filter out some of the unimportant words. If you feel, try to understand, it's not a mandatory step. If you feel, then you can remove some of the unimportant tokens. So how we can, uh, miss, you can set different kind of criteria to remove the unimportant tokens. So here, in this preprocessing steps, this, this is taken. Here we have taken a criteria, that criteria is called average occurrence frequency, AOF. If some of the keywords are having less than this average occurrence frequency, then we can say, this token or this term is not important. So how we can find this average occurrence frequency? This is the equation as a simple equation. The frequency of each token. What are the tokens? Tokens, we're talking about the terms. After tokenization, the terms are called token, right? So summation of frequency of each token by number of tokens. So if you do, then we can find certain kind of threshold value. So if some term is having the frequency less than that, then we assume that token is not important for processing the data. So we can remove it. And then, and then see here, if you collect the data from the Twitter, if you collect, then, then this kind of pre-processing can be done. So here it is written, 
removal of username and hit with symbols so if it is a twitter data only then it is a clickable and then also a removal of hashtag so hashtag in twitter data we have so if it is twitter data then this kind of things can be done so whenever you do all those things then all the unnecessary means all the unnecessary text from the text is removed then we'll have only the meaningful tokens and words in the text what do next so pre-processing part is done here so after pre-processing what do, what do we need to do because our objective is to process the data so whenever we want to process something that thing has to be represented in computer memory if you cannot represent them, we cannot do any kind of operations. But in textual data, we are having two kinds of representational scheme. Now, this scheme, first one is called vector space model. This is called VSM. And second one is called graph space model. So now we're going to talk about the first one, what is vector space model. In vector space model, we treat each document as a vector. And for each document and for the terms, which are available, which are extracted uh, after pre-processing within those terms and the documents. Now we can assume that each tweet of the document, right? So within those things, we can make a term document matrix. Here it's a term document matrix. Now in the term document matrix, we need to keep the weights for each term corresponding to each document. Now, how we can give the weight for the each term? So if we apply the support with a vector space model, then we are having number of term weighting approaches by which we can give the weight for a particular term. And the approaches are here. These are the approaches. You can see the TF, the term frequency, completely, simply term frequency, right? Then the most popular one that is TF idea. But keep in mind, in TF-IDF, I'm going to talk about in detail what is TF-IDF and how it differs from TF. But in TF-IDF, it is missing one thing. That is, it doesn't take the class level of the document. So whenever we have the document which is a supervised, TF-IDF doesn't take into account the classification level of the document. That's why there are a number of supervised weighting algorithms or supervised weighting approaches. And these approaches, the first one is called TF chi, then this is term frequency relevant relevance factor, this is TF RF, then we have term frequency inverse document frequency inverse class specific density frequency that is called TF IDF ICSDF, and the latest one that is called TF IGN, that is term frequency inverse gravity moment. So if somebody wants to work in say term weighting approaches, they can they can see this one, TFIGM. This is the state of our term weighting approach. So in these approaches, generally, we give the waste to the term document matrix. We talked about the term document matrix. In the term document matrix, we need to give the weights for the each term. And now these are the approaches by which we can give the weights there. Go to next. So already talk about the TF IDF and TF also talk about so TF is a, uh, is a simple one and in most of the cases generally we use TF IDF and the school form is term frequency inverse document frequency what is that actually and here is the equation you want to find the weight of a term WID ID is talking about the term I in document J if you want to find the weight of that term then this is the equation TF TF IDF is the this is the frequency term frequency in document j and here we have log n of dfi so dfi is the number of document containing the term i and n is the total number of document so keep in mind here if this t dfi increases dfi increases then the value of the term decreases what is the philosophy of that the philosopher says that if we have a term and if this term occurs in number of documents in the database, then that term has less capacity to discriminate the documents because this term is available in number of documents. So that philosophy is given here. That's why this DFI is given as denominator in law because whenever it becomes greater, the total part becomes lesser. If it becomes lesser, the log value of this one becomes lesser. 
So that's why this TFIBF is taken care. In TFIBF, generally, that the point which is taken care if the calm occurs frequently in number of the tumors means is the discrimination ability is less. That's why the less values will be given. And the equation is divided in such a, such a way so that the weights can be given or less if it occurs in more number of or, or, or maximum number of subjects. That's why this is the equation. Go to next. So here we talked about TF and IDF. Now we talked about the term document, the term documents matrix also. So now we are going to see with an application how actually that nothing happens. So here you can you can see that we have say tweeted data. So we have taken uh, five tweets. One, two, three, four, five. Now we can assume that these all are the documents. In a database, if in the document, the database of the documents, then each document we can have some text can be. So now each tweet can be treated as a document. So how many documents we have? One, two, three, four, five. So we have a five documents. Go to next now. So now if we pre-process pre and tokenize, then the total terms becomes like this. From the five tweets, if we tokenize it, if we uh, remove the stop words, if we remove the hashtag, if we remove the URLs, the finally these are the tokens. And we have used the unique run here. And now if you find the average occurrence frequency of all these terms, the value becomes 1.3659. So obviously, if some of the terms is having the average occurrence frequency above this, then only these terms can be considered as important. So we apply this one and finally we found that we're having only how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Already we have eight uh, terms which are important now. These terms are now important. Now we can say these are the features now. Now these features can be represented in vector space, vector space model. Go to the next slide. So we're having eight, keep in mind. So now each tweet, already I talked about that each tweet can be taken as a document. So how many tweets we have? Five tweets. So we have here now five documents, D1, D2, D3, D4, and D5. And these are the keywords. These are the keywords now. IPL, RPS, VS, KKR, score, today, Smithy, and then KKR, VRPS. These are the now terms. Now, if we apply only the term frequency, not TF idea, just we used here for the sake of simplicity, the term frequency, then we can see that IPL occurs how many times in D1? Two times. That's why it is two. And this IPL occurs in D2 once, that's why this is one. IPL occurs in D3 once, that's why one. Similarly, D4 and D5. Similarly, here we have the RPS, how many times occurs in D1, D2, D3, D4, and D5. Similarly, VS, how many times? Two, zero, zero, like that. KKR, similarly. Score, similarly. Today, similarly. Smith, similarly. And KKR, the RPS, similarly, we have extracted now if you find the weights of ipl then simply we can add all the values here two one one four five and two seven so the weight of this ipl can be seven now if you use the term frequency so this matrix is called actually term document matrix in this matrix each of the document try to understand each of the document is taken as a vector we are talking about the information retrieval we're talking we're processing the textual data but keep in mind in computer, computer memory, computer cannot work with the textual data. Somehow we have to convert it into numerical data. So now this text is represented using a vector space model and each of the tweets or each of the document is represented as a vector now. So we have a vector, so vector in computer science and machine learning of everywhere we do the operation of vector space. Now, in that way, we can make this term document matrix. We'll go to the next slide. So this is vector space model. But seeing the vector space model, there is some of difficulties. What are difficulties are there? It cannot conserve the meaning of a text, or it cannot conserve the structure of a text explicitly. Vector space model cannot conserve the structure and meaning of a text. This is one problem. And second problem, vector space model takes each word independently. It doesn't take into account the sequence of word appearance or any other relation in the text. It blindly takes the frequency of the terms. That's why each term is taken independently as 
This is, that's why if we have two documents whose meanings are similar, but the English words or terms are different, then they cannot find a similarity between two documents. This is the problem of vector space model. Now to overcome the difficulties or problems of the vector space model, there is another kind of representation that is called graph based model. So what is a graph? Well, do we know graph is a collection of node and edges. So we have N and E. Now what is N actually? And each token, because after tokenization, we have a number of tokens. Now each token is used or treated as a node in a graph. Fine. Now the second is so we got to know how we can make the edges now. Now to find the edges in a graph, we are having different kind of approaches. The first approach is called co-occurrence here. Then we have syntactic, semantic, and similarity network. So if we use a graph based model, we have the flexibility of taking care of syntactic analysis, semantic analysis, and also the similarity between two documents. So if you're interested in working that, you can work here in, the, in those things. But here in this example, we're going to talk about only co-occurrence based. In co-occurrence based, again, can have the different categories, right? So one category is called nearest neighbor aging, and second category is called all neighbors aging, all neighbors aging. So keep in mind, these two categories are from two or research paper, but you have full flexibility if you work here, and if you understand, then you can devise a new algorithm here. So it is talking about co-occurrence, nearest neighbor aging, talking that if we're having two words or two terms, A and B, if they appear in a document A and B, in that way, in the graph, we have to make an edge from A to B. Only two documents. That's why it's called nearest neighbor edging. And here it is talking about all neighbors edging. It's talking that in a document, if we have a one A, and after A, we have B, C, D, E, then we need to have an edge from A to B, A to C, A to D, and A to E. For all the, all the keywords or all the terms which are available in a single tweet or a single document, we need to have edge from the beginning. Similarly, we can have B to C, B to D, B to E. Like that, we can have the edges. If we follow all neighbor edging method. And if we use the nearest neighbor, then if we have A, B, C, D, because A and B, because we're talking about it, two terms, so we have we'll have an edge from A to B because they appear in that order, they appear in the text document. So in our examples, we have taken care, we have taken this so nearest neighbor edging because, because it, it, it simplifies the problem actually, the graph, size of the graph. Go to the next slide. So here, this is the node weight already we know, the aging, this is if two tokens already things are written, if two tokens co-occur within the same window, same window means we're talking about the same tweet, same tweet can be same document, then there can be an edge between them. Now, how to give the weights? There are different kind of approaches that by which you can give the weights to the edges. Different kind of approaches are there, right? So here, we develop one approach and this approach here written W W E W C M N. We're talking about how we can give the edge weight between M and N. So that you can say this frequency F M comma N by F M plus F N minus F M minus N. So what is the meaning of that? Meaning of that is that how many times this F comma N is occurred in that sequence in the whole database is how they co-occur together. How they co-occur together in the database that one can be numerator and the denominator can be number of times M is occurred, number of times N is occurred minus F N comma N. So this is one of the equations try to understand. And you are having ample scope here if you work how the edge weights can be given in graphics model. So there are different kind of approaches and the scientists are giving, proposing different kinds of methods here. Go to next. Next, yeah, so now if you see the graph based model, that will be the structure. Later, I'll discuss in detail. That will be the structure here. How many we have? And eight terms. These are the terms one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight terms here. Now, in between each term, we're having some kind of weights, some kind of weights. And these weights are generated, or these weights are calculated based on the equations what we have seen in the last slide. So these are the weights. So 
when we represent a text in graph this model then the representation becomes like like this go to next slide now 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 the questions in the earlier slide what do we have seen we have seen there is weight between the, between two nodes means there is weight for the edges wait for the edges wait for the edges but still we don't have any weight for the nodes we don't have any weight for the nodes so what is your objective our objective is to find which node is having the highest impact which node is the most important so we have here in the graph this model in the graph theory there is a concept of centrality measure which finds which node is the most important if the node is the most important means the node is that node means that token is most important or that 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 term is the most important keyword now how we can find out the centrality measures there are different kind of centrality measures right so the first one is called the most popular that is called the degree centrality then we have cluster coefficients the degree centrality is very simple it is the equations in the numerator we have dv dv is talking about the total number of neighbors how many neighbors are there and this neighbor actually the total number of in degree and out degree and and the numerator denominator part we have n minus 1 means how many total nodes are available in the graph minus 1 please go to the previous previous slide so that i can tell you the degrees yeah if you talk about the degree centrality of ipl ipl then you say how many neighbors are there 1 2 3 4 and 5 so numerator becomes 5 a denominator becomes how many total number of nodes how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 8 minus 1 5 by 7 so if it is 5 by 7 then if you calculate you will get exactly the, the the degree of this ipl so if you use the degree centrality measure then 5 by 7 will the weights of this node go to next 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 yeah yeah so that is the degree centrality measure now the class the coefficient this is another measure this is this is also a popular measure it is talking about iv by nv this is the equation what is iv actually so ev ev is talking about number of edges between all neighbors of the vertex number of edges between all neighbors we are having the neighbors within the neighbors how many edges are there we need to calculate and then it is divided by nv nv is talking about set of neighbors of a vertex v it is talking about how many probable edges can be in the neighbors so we be talking about how many edges are there and nv talking about how many possible edges can be this is actually it is written like that but it is talking about how many possible edges can be within the neighbors so go to the previous slide so that i can tell you okay so if you talk about this one here this this so this is we're finding using the classical coefficient so we need to find how many how many neighbors are having the having the edges so how many this neighbor this 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 so how many connections are there 1 2 3 Only the four, so numerator becomes four, and denominator becomes how many possible edges can be made among the neighbors. So how many ten can be? See here from here, so here to here one, then here to here two, then here to here three, then here to here four. Similarly here three, seven, here two like that. And how many possible connections can be here? You see RPS from RPS to VS one, from RPS to KKR one two, from RPS to KKR V RPS three, then from RPS to Smith, how many four possible? Talking about the possible edges. Similarly, from VS again we get three. Similarly, from KKR we get two. Here from we get one. So if we summation, if we make the summation, then we get this. The value of possible number of edges becomes ten. So go to next slide. So in that way, in that way we can find the class of coefficients. The next one that I'm going to talk about is three to four. Then there are number of centrality measures. Go to next slide, sir. So here we have the selectivity centrality because already we have seen that we found the strain of the edges, but but still the edge weight is not being used. Yes, edge weight can be used, and number of selectivity is number of the ways. So if we use the selectivity centrality, and selectivity centrality is talking about about the calculation. This is the ratio of node strength SM and degree of the node VM as shown. So this is talking about. If we talk about the selectivity centrality of a node, then it is talking about the ratio between the strength of the node and the degree of the node. So, what is the strength of the node? See here, definition is given: strength of the node. The node strength for a node M is the sum of all the edge weights which are incident on node M, as shown here, like this equation. 
means all the edges, all the edges. But weights are there. If we sum all the weights, then that becomes the strength. A strength by degree, that becomes the centrality measure, and that centrality is called selectivity centrality measure. Please, please go to the previous slide. One of it, previous one, more, one more. Yeah, here. So if you talk about the selectivity centrality of this one, this becomes what? 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.11 plus 0 0.67, then plus 0 0.27, uh, 0 0.125. This becomes numerator. A denominator becomes which one? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and finally. So in that way, we can use the selectivity centrality. Go to the next slide. Right slide. Okay, here. So we're standing here. The centrality that is called selectivity centrality measure. So using the selectivity centrality, we can find the weights of a node. Go to next. Similarly, here we have a closeness to the central node. Not, I'm not going to discuss this one because again we can have the first. This formula is given here, and there are a number of centrality measures and the populars. These are between a centrality measure, eigenvectors centrality measure, take strength centrality measure. You you heard about the text then. This is also graph-based approach by which we can find the weights of a node. So in that way, we can find the weights of a node of a graph. Go to next. So now, if, if we have this example already, we, 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 we saw the example. This is the example. Now we're going to solve this example using the graph-based model. Go to next. So after removal of all these new, uh, all the stop words, this is the these are this is the text. Then go to next. Now these are the after pre-processing. These are the tokens, and after not pre-processing, by, by by certain steps, not all the steps. So one of the steps is what AOF. The value of AOF is 1.365. If you apply this one, already we know. How many will have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 only. So now we're running 8. Go to next. So that's why this is the graph. Already we have shown earlier, we have seen earlier, but this is the graph. That's why this is the graph. If we follow the graph best approach. Now, if we apply degree centrality, then go to next. So now we can use a degree centrality to find the weights of each node. So if you find the degree centrally, the, the value of IPL becomes this, value of RPL becomes this, value of VS becomes this, like, 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 like this. These are the weights of the nodes. Now, if we want to find some important keywords from here, also we are having certain kind of algorithms. For example, any rank algorithm, node edge, node edge rank algorithm, this is dedicated. If you are having number of keywords with weights, if you want to find the important keywords, then node edge rank is very one popular algorithm. That algorithm can be used. So that algorithm is not used here. Simply we're using the ranks. So IPL rank one, KKR rank two, like that. These are the ranks according to the strength of the according to the weights of the nodes. So now we are having eight terms. Say if we want to select, if we want to select seven out of eight, then we, we select here up to VS here. So these become the keywords now. So using these keywords, now we can do the operation or now we can process the document or we can do certain kind of operation. Because if you get the keywords, then document classification, sentiment analysis, means document summarization, text summarization, all those tasks can be done very easily. Very next. So already you have done about, talked about how to extract the keyword. And keep in mind, we extracted the keyword, but there are some measures whether the or what means the keywords what we extracted, what is the performance of those keywords. I did not discuss those things here I, I, due to paucity of time, I know. So I did not discuss, I did not include in the, in the, in the slide, but keep in mind whenever we make a model of the keyword extractions, there is a certain kind of measures. So you can see some of the research paper, things are given here. In two, three, and four different ways, the performance of keyword extractions can be analyzed. And now the next question, how to retrieve or search a document in the search engine? What does do actually? So initially, when all the operations, when each of the document is treated as a vector, these vectors are represented in computer, computer memory and database is created like that actually. So if you see the above row here, document, keyword extraction is done, then using keywords, this indexing kind of thing is done in the computer memory, right? So now the database is available. Now the data is available in the computer memory. Now whenever somebody puts a query here, that's why it's a query is here. 
then keywords are extracted and already we know how keywords can be extracted there can be different kind of approaches already you have seen different kind of methods so most uh, state of art method is used in say most recent io system actually so keywords can be extracted here after extracting keywords here we are coming we are matching this using the keywords we are matching the stored documents because when we store the documents we generally find the keywords using the keywords the document is represented in the computer memory and whoever whenever some query comes we extracted the keywords and now we match with the keywords of the query and the keywords of the document we do matching when we match we can find certain kind of score how much similar they are the score is here then what kind of score you are going to accept it totally depends on the retrieval model so the acceptability can be 0.8 0.9 or 0.5 also or you can have a model that you are going to select only top 10 documents not more than top 10 documents that's why here we have the retrieval model according to the model you can decide what is the criteria your criteria and then the e score is e score is found and then we can retrieve the documents here very easily now here the most important question is the matching because already we have seen the keyword extraction but how we do the matching next for matching next next for matching we have number of say similar measure if we talk about the coefficient based similarity measure these are the popular you can see pearson and correlation coefficient this is also used in text analysis this is very popular in say uh, data science then the spearman is very popular in data science but also used in text kendall stow is the most recent if the database size is very used then kendall stow coefficient is used but also can be used in text and then we have a jacquard index a jacquard coefficient then we have simple matching coefficient then cosine similarity and this cosine similarity is very famous in text ranking or text analysis kind of thing and then we have the distance based when we talk about the distance we are not going to talk about so we are coming now the cosine similarity go to next what is that actually so already we have seen whenever a document is represented in computer memory the document is represented as a vector so whenever we are going to match or find the similarity, we are going to find the similarity between two vectors. So cosine similarity is a similarity which finds the strength and direction between the strength and direction of linear relationship between two vectors. The strength and direction. If the strength and directions of two vectors are same, then the value it produces that is one. If they are totally opposite, they are not same. Then the value becomes minus one. So the range of cosine similarity can be minus one and plus one. So now within that we can have some value. Whenever we, it's it is it is not expected that whenever we compare two documents that we get plus one because the documents are not exactly similar, right? So we can have below zero point five, we can have below zero point six, we can have zero point seven. Whenever you design a model, it is your jurisdiction how much you are in the similarity. So it can be 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, whatever it is. Now, how we can find the cosine similarity? And this is the equation, very simple equation of cosine similarity. Very simple. You have see here, this is the score, and this is score can be found using this one. X into Y, because X is one vector, and Y is another vector. If X is one document, Y is another document. Then we find norm of vector. These are called norm. Norm of x and norm of y. So now if you simplify the equation, then it becomes this. And this one becomes root over this. So here we have two vectors. See here, the vectors are x. The x, now these are the values for this vector. 2, 4, 0, 0, 2, 1, 3, 0, 2, 1. It can be. x is the document. Now this document can have number of the keywords. And these are can be the frequency of the keywords. Or these can be the weight of the notes. Similarly, we have y, and these are the frequency of the keywords. Now we're going to match how similar they are. So already according to the formula, we need to find which one now? X dot y. This we need to multiply each element with each element. 2 into 2. Then which one? Plus 4 into 1. See here. Then which one? Plus 0 into 0. Then which one? 0 into 0. Like that. If we do See, very simple calculation in cosine similarity, not in the cosine only. Now, all the mathematics are very simple if you see carefully. Then if this is 19. 
And now if you find the norm of x, see here on the next line, norm of x, this norm of x, already the formula is written here, this is root of her, and then the square of all the elements. So we have a 2, 2 square, plus 4 square, plus 0 square, like that, we're having which one? Root over 5.83. Uh, similarly for y, we can calculate the values up here, and that is 4.47. Simple you can get. And now if you find this one, the final value becomes 0 0.729. So now if you talk about the vector or document x and y, if you find their similarity, they are similar. How much? 0 0.729 coefficient up to here. So now if our threshold and cutoff is 0 0.6, then if our query is x, then y will be retrieved. Because the similarity is moved here. So that similarity is totally dependent on how much you are keeping it depends on the retrieval model. Come to next. And here we have the Jekyll similarity measure. I'm not, yeah, so a bit, I don't have time, sorry. So I'm, I'm not going to discuss this. Jekyll similarity is applicable for, for binary values. So if we have the vectors and all the feature values are represented by 1, 0, 1, 0, then this, this kind of, this matching is used. So not going to talk this one, go to next, please. Simple matching again here, there is some shortage in the jacker. That's why simple matching comes in picture. Same thing. Then go next. We have a Pearson correlation. This is the equation, very simple. Go next. And this is a Spearman correlation. Next. This is Kendall Stau. And this Kendall Stau, if the database is very big, then this Kendall Stau should be used. Fine. So not going to talk about all those things. So these are the matching. These are the similarity measure by which we can match between two documents. The next. So that part is over now. Now we are coming to the main part that is called sentiment analysis. What is that actually? Sentiment analysis is the interpretation and classification of emotions. The emotions can be anger, happy, uh, and sad, fear. These are the emotions of someone within text that are using text analysis technique. But keep in mind, nowadays, with our, the definition is not confined to the text data. It can be image data. It can be sound data also because nowadays they, from the images people are uh, predicting the sentiments. So, so if we talk about the fundamental definition, that is a fundamental. It is talking about interpretation and classification of emotions of someone within the text data using text analysis technique. But it is not limited now. So now, say we want to how we can measure the sentiment of somebody. So here I have an example of e-commerce product. This is the product what we buy from the own, from the internet. So now the people are giving some uh, reviews there. If, if, if somebody is very happy, then it gives five star, four star like that. If somebody is not happy, then it gives one star, two star like that. So now we're going to make one sentiment analysis model so that if the model is trained, whenever some new sentiments comes, or one review, or say number of reviews come, then automatically the model can predict that whether the reviews are good or bad. Because whenever the reviews are coming, say 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 10,000, because nowadays the reviews are less. But keep in mind, with the advent of technology and communications, it is expected that after a certain time, the number of reviews will be very more. Number of, because now, some buddies are having, say, mobile phones or like uh, internet connectivity, but after a few years, everybody will have, so number of reviews will, will, will increase. We can assume like that. So if the number of reviews is, say, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, then is it possible to look it manually and to decide whether the reviews are good or bad? No. Then we must have certain kind of models so that if the reviews are coming as input to the model, the model can decide whether the reviews are good or bad. So that way we made this model here. And this model is made for the e-product. And here we have taken the reviews from a product that is Redmi Note 1. So here we have the two tweets. I'm just we're going to train the model using two tweets so that you can understand the working principle. So here we have one review. And this is the five star. So to make the model, this five star is assigned as one. And we have assumed that if somebody gives a more than two star, that is positive review. And if it is two or less, then it's, that is negative. So T2 is here, so this is negative. So now we have a vector here, we have a vector here, the vector of this class is one, vector of this class is minus one. Two class problem, that is two class problem, for the sake of simplicity. So now we, we do the pre-processing, so what do we have in T1, we have Redmi, Node, and Beast we have, 
And in Q2, we are having all the tokens here. Go to next. Then we need. So now, in a, we, we are doing the pre-processing kind of thing now here. The pre-processing kind of thing, right? So, so now all the tokens are available here, and we're using the graphless model. See here, we have the graph now, and now we have the edges here. All the edges are available here. Fine. Now we represent the whole text in graphless model. So I think this part is clear because we have taken all the words from two reviews. Then go to next. Sir, sir yeah. I'm audible. I mean, I'm uh, I'm sufficiently. Uh, I have ten minutes. I think. Yeah, yeah. 10 yeah. So actually, there is uh, there is a, a question from the participant. Uh, is it is it is it possible for you to read the uh, comments, sir, Dr. Saroj? Yeah, I, I can. You just open it up. Then I okay. Fine, fine. Thanks for So these these questions are related to these examples only. That's why I have raised. Okay, okay. Tell me what example. Yeah, you just yeah. read it out. Which one? Yeah, so it is like uh, in Redmi Note, EG Beast uh, could be taken as a negative sentiment also if five yeah, stars yeah, yeah. are not given. Yeah, yeah, you just you try to understand. I could understand, but this is an example, and okay. we have given this is five star. If it is five star, to understand only, right? When you make the model, we can have a big database number of words to make you understand. If it is a five star, say, right. try to understand. So, so. So now this can be a word which can be taken as negative sense and positive sense. Say, you try, I'm not say, defending him. I'm not okay. arguing with him, but I'm okay. telling the truth actually. Are you getting my point or not? So yes, if, yes. If, if it is give, if the five star is given here, then we can treat this as positive. Say, thus you try to understand to make the model. Then, then you, you can have some questions and I'll answer. Yes, so that you can answer the model. Yes, so here, here, here we have all the all the keywords now. Now go to next. Here keyword extraction. So we have used the degree centrality. Now we find the the degree of each keyword. In twelve means this. Go to next slide so that I can tell you. Uh, previous to the previous slide. Here you see the twelve number. You can see twelve, twelve. This is twelve. This is twelve. So means each keyword is having some number here to understand. So this this suggests as twelve. Go to next. This 12 is having this degree. This element has this degree. This one has this degree. Like that, we calculated all the degrees of all the nodes. Fine. So now what the degrees? So we use only the co-occurrence. But keep in mind here, I have one more step that is called important set of keywords in the flowchart. In the means in the uh, flow flow diagram, we have important set of keywords. So we can have a keywords here. Now, if our objective is to find important set of keywords, already actually we can use node edge rank algorithm this is one way another way is that when you use this one say co-occurrence based in say a uh, graphless model we did not use a semantic relation but in say python you have availability what one semantic package that is called pause tagging pause part of speech so this is available too if you use then automatically pause tags we will say find you means give you the all the words so if we apply here the pause tagging then we can get these are the keywords. These are the keywords, right? So in post tagging, we get part of the speech which is noun, which is adverb, which is adverb, adjective kind of things actually. In one of the research articles and many of the research articles, we have seen that if if we take only the adjective and adverbs, then the classification of the sentiment becomes better. We have seen in a number of articles. That's why we have taken only the adverbs and adjectives from these keywords. From these keywords, see here the keywords we have, such as noun, the NN, by BB, Redmi NN, this JJ kind of thing, these are the nouns and adjectives. So we have two adjectives, nouns and adjectives, two adjectives here, and adverbs, guys, and English. Go to next so that you can understand. Go to next. So now if we apply post tagging, and if we take only the adverb and adjectives, then important keywords can be angry and guys. Two only will get. Now we got two important keywords. Using these two, key, you try to understand. In our database, we have only the two tweets or two reviews. Whenever the number of review increases, number of important keywords will increase also. So now we got only the two keywords, angry and guy. So here, the tweets are, the, the reviews are taken as T1 and this is T2. Now if you say T1, then this is zero, this is zero. This angry is zero, guys is zero, one. 
a T2 is 0 0.125 and this is 0 0.225, this is minus 1 because these are degrees, degrees, these are the degrees of angry, degrees of guy and this is minus 1 because the second tweak, the second review was negative. That's why we make it negative and this one will make, 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 make as positive this one. So you can to understand if you have the two reviews then each review can be treated as a, as a vector and these are the features of the vector, angry and guys. Whenever the number of reviews increases, the number of features will increase. And in that way, each review can be represented as a vector here. As a vector. In graph based model, also we are taking, we are finding the uh, widths of the node, and finally, these are represented like that. So we have the two tweets, T1 and T2, and each one is a vector now, and these are the values. So we have one positive, one, one negative. So if we have, say, for an example, 100 tweets, so we can have 100 samples here. Some could be positive, some would be negative. So whenever we have these kind of vectors, if these vectors are given to a machine learning model, the model will be trained. Is a little bit trained, then we can forecast or we can predict the sentiment using say machine learning model. So as we are having data samples, so that we don't won't have any kind of problems here. That is called machine learning based sentiment analysis. But keep in mind here, I'm going to talk you one thing. There are two ways of sentiment analysis. One is called machine learning based sentiment analysis. And second one is called lexicon based sentiment analysis. Machine learning based sentiment analysis is, is very much close to the domain. It totally depends on the domain and it doesn't have much flexibility. It works only the available data. If the data is new, then machine learning model cannot work very well. And if the size of the data set is very low, then the generalization capability of the machine learning model is low. So in such cases, if we want to make it more generalized and a flexible model, so we can look for look for a lexicon based sentiment analysis. After we have the phase is same, there is no problem. But to give the polarity, but to make the sentiment, because based on the polarity we make the sentiments, then there is another approach that is called lexicon, lexicon based sentiment analysis. Go to the next slide. So we have a lexicon based here. Here we made, we proposed this one, this model, lexicon based here, you know, in one of our articles. So here the sentiment uh, classification using polarity assignment. Now for each WI, each word, we are going to give some polarity, whether it could be a single. Because each word is having certain kind of positive polarity and certain kind of negative polarity. And finally, the polarity of a particular word can be found using positive minus negative that would be the final polarity so here we have the equation this is number of times the pair ig j can be any number of words means the word which appear after the v1 so number of times the pair occurs in positive reviews we have to find this frequency number of times the pair occurs in negative we have to find right and then we have to find the reviews where only w i of a single not jointly with other words Means with other keywords, try to understand. When you find the important keywords, the number of important keywords becomes less. So we have to find the number of reviews where only not other important keywords, only we're having WI. We have to count. And from there, we have to count how many number of times the word WI occurs singly in positive reviews in training and number of times the word WI occurs in negative reviews in the training set, in positive and negative. Separately, a single. Go to the next slide. Then we establish the equation. By this equation, we can find the positive score or positive uh, polarity of what WI. This is the equation. That so negative polarity, because already I talked before, each keyword can have some positive polarity, can have some negative polarity. So, how many times they occur in positive and a negative? In that way, we can find it easily. So, we have a positive polarity and negative polarity here. And finally, we can find the polarity score of WI by positive score minus negative score. Finally, we'll get. So for a particular keyword, we can get the polarity by this equation. But keep in mind, whenever we have a review, the review can have a number of keywords. Uh, finally, the polarity of the review can be found using this equation. See here, score WI, score WI here. This one, score WI here. Score R, this is a final polarity of a review, the summation of all the keywords we can take here. Now, if this summation becomes, if here, the condition, if this summation becomes greater than zero, then we can say polarity one, else polarity minus one. 
So now if you apply the same concept in the two tweets, then we can see, go to the next slide. So here we have one, this is minus one. And we found here angry and guys. And see here in angry, the positive polarity is 0.00, .00 and negative 1.0. And guys positive is 00, .00 and negative is 1.0. Now if some new reviews come, say the new review, feelings so angry right now, I will never recommend this product. So this is a new review, right? So if we find how many keywords are there, only one, that is angry. And angry already we have here, the keyword, right? We go to next now. So positive was positive score was 0.0, .0 and negative score was 1.0. So now find the final score of angry, then it becomes 0 minus 1. So it becomes minus 1. So therefore the polarity of the review minus 1. So the sentiment of the review is negative. So if we use lexicon-based sentiment analysis, try to understand. We have machine learning based, but machine learning base is not flexible. Because if it is trained uh, in a particular data, then it is applicable on the data only. Because it is very much biased to the statistical data. The machine learning is very much biased to the data set actually. And then, and if the size of the data is very less, then the generalization capability of machine learning is very low. In such a situation, we can use lexicon-based polarity assignment. But keep in mind, we also can propose, because in number of literature, the hybrid models are there. Means we can use it. Machine learning, as well as we can use a lexicon base. Initially, we can use a lexicon, lexicon base, and after using lexicon base, that keywords can be given to the machine learning classifier so that it can classify in that way. So, hybrid model is also available. So, if somebody wants to work, they can work on if in the polarity assignment, they can work on the hybrid model. This is the trend you can see. Next, I think that's that's. Uh, thank you everybody and if you have any questions then you can tell me that I'm trying a little bit to answer and also you can look for the yesterday questions because yesterday I answered only one question. Yeah, so I think uh, now I request participants to raise their question because typing request uh, require times. So uh, let I, mean, I, I request participants to enable their audio and raise these questions because that will be more convenient by keep by keeping the time. Uh, because sir, sir, I'm, yeah. I'm out of out of time, sir. So you can read some yes. of the questions. I think it's good. <laughs> so questions, no, sir. Actually, I'm I'm requesting parts. So questions are more or less addressed. So let me raise one question which we have left. Uh, and question like how we will get the link between keyword link or maybe a relationship between keywords in the graph based model for keyword extraction. That's one question. Actually, again, repeat. Actually, I didn't get the question. Question is like. Uh, uh, in the graph based model during this keyword extraction how to derive the relation or links between keywords oh, oh okay how to miss edge edge okay edge. edge yeah this edge already we have talked that this edge can be uh, established in number of ways one way is the co-occurrence another way is syntactic semantic and similarity network so here in this example we follow co-occurrence co-occurrence is talking about if we have say two term in a document A and B, two term A and B, they appear in a document in that order A and B. So if A and B become two term in the graph, then we will make an edge from A to B because they are, they are appearing or they appear in that order in a document. So in there means the way in which they appear in the document in that way we draw one edge from one keyword to another keyword means one term to another term. I think point is clear. Right, right. So yeah, there is this uh, another question. Uh, which model is optimal for keyword extraction in sentiment analysis between vector space and graph? Which yeah, graph, one is graph. yeah, graph based. Yeah. People are working because in Google also the text rank is used, right? Page rank is used. These all are graph based model. Because already I talked in the vector space model, there is some problem. They take only the frequency of the words, but they do not take care on what is the relationship between two keywords? What is the semantic relationship and other relationship between words? Those things are not taken care. Independently takes words individually, finds the frequency, and according to that, it works. That's why BSM model is not work. But keep in mind, in, in you can say text rank, page rank, you can see the algorithm is divided with the help of BSM model and also with the help of graph-based model. That's why that is called hybrid model. 
you can see in the somewhere they find the frequency and then if you, that frequency can be used in the graph so if you work if you work in keyword extraction you can find the q hybrid model because also we we we, we say propose one hybrid model and got published in the lcbf report so right. you can work on that right so i think we actually we have done with the question posted in the chat box and we have just requested participants to raise their questions if they have and uh, with this uh, i want to uh, share my greetings uh, on the behalf of nit kurukshetra department of computer engineering uh, to dr saroj viswas for uh, having two different session on two different days on two different topics in this fdp so it is always a uh, i mean experience to listen to him because he is having this kind of i mean whenever we cover something uh, related to machine learning or any topic related to machine learning he used to take uh, these elementary concepts on the ppt so that's a, that is something very it is very rare actually so that's why uh, and i consider this is a opportunity so thank you for uh, delivering two different session two different topics in this fdp thank you dr thank you bikram sir for your consistent support and encouragement for me and we have a very good relationship since say yes. uh, three to four months actually thank yes, you sir. thank you sir thank you thank you so okay so we have got one question sir it is like uh, uh, from getting degree can I use fuzzy membership function okay so question is not that clear so i request yeah, yeah. part yeah obviously obviously yeah I, i could understand because i was to work fuzzy because one of my phd student completed his phd on fuzzy so i, I work in many dimensions so fuzzy logic concept can be used because whenever finding the probability kind of thing fuzzy is not a probability but it is very close to that so fuzzy concept can be used here can be used so you can you, you are full flexible on that you can do any kind of thing to find the weights of the edges or the weight weight of the of the say nodes you have full flexibility those who want to start work in say a sentiment analysis they can focus on keyword extraction and you can work on that and you can get publications because once you get one publication you can have a full idea on that so that you can explore the ideas in different dimensions but you right. say that i i work in different dimensions currently i am having more than 7 phd scholars currently uh, yes. because i have also part time scholars so mm -hmm. most of the students all the students are working in different dimensions so so i have the exposure bit on say fuzzy logic you can say how to how to use machine learning to drug design drug repurposing two people are working on that this is an emerging topic so we are working on that thank you sir yeah thank you so again uh, i mean this is kind of a uh, final thank you because we have a study also uh, today we have a more session from dr uh, so so i would like to thank you sir and uh, with this uh, we will be connecting in future also uh, right sir thank you thank you thank you sir i'm so, uh, thank you everybody thank you all the participant for bearing me for one yes. and half an hours thank you everybody <laughs> for your cordial support thank right. you Okay, so from here uh, now, I think we can conclude this session. Uh, let's connect. Let's be connected for the session two. And uh, I mean, we have covered all these uh, announcements, all those, all those declarations. And let's hope that uh, we will be connecting uh, uh, this session two on time. And hopefully, there will be no technical glitches from the expert side also. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you.